shines on everyone. Yes, it does. There's a million stars. Each for one every city. Welcome to this edition of Cops Corner, presented by the Urbana Police Department. I'm Officer James, and today we have a special guest with us. We have Investigator Timothy McNaught. Greetings, Tim. Hello. How you doing? Okay, so, um, Tim, you're on to talk about, um, you're an investigator with the city of Urbana, and you've been with the uh, investigator for how long now? Over nine years. Over nine years, and then you worked patrol prior to that for how long? Yeah, a total of 18 years. 18 years, man, you've been at it for a long time, Tim. Um, along with your investigative duties that the general investigators do with the, um, the shootings, the um, sexual assaults and things of that nature, the high value crimes. You also have a specialty job that you do that nobody else in the department does. And, and what, can you tell us a little bit about that? In 2010, um, I became involved with the Illinois Ten Attorney General's Office Internet Crimes Against Children's Task Force. Mm -hmm. um, so for the last six years, <clears throat> I spend part of my time investigating child exploitation cases. Wow. Um, also, with in a, probably around 2012, um, I got connected to uh, ICE, uh, Homeland Security Investigations, and became a federal task force officer doing the same types of things. So, so I, I will investigate federal crimes or child exploitation cases, and typically we'll have those prosecuted in, in the federal courts versus the state court. Um, <clears throat> And that, along the same lines, I also got trained in to do uh, computer forensics and cell phone forensics. So with the child cases, I'll do what I talk about the front end, actually the kind of the undercover online work. Mm -hmm. And I also will do the back end, you know, after we make it at rest and do the computer forensics on the cases. So I kind of do the front end and back end on both sides for these cases. Okay. So, so just, just so I'm clear on, on what you just said, which is a mouthful, um, you work as, as a federal, you know, you have federal agency authority as well, right, in some of your training, um, as well as um, when we seize a phone th and it has some evidence on it, you would be the one that, that goes in and, and locates that evidence that we need. Is that correct? Yes. Um, like I said, the child crimes is, because of time, it's kind of a small part of what I do mm -hmm. here in Japan, especially the federal side. Um, it just one of the reasons we do things federally is oftentimes they're more equipped to handle the more technical cases because uh, they actually have a, a, what they call it, Project Safe Childhood uh, prosecutor who's specially trained to handle these types of cases. So that works well in the federal system. <clears throat> as far as just your everyday crimes, you know, the, the shootings we've had lately and just the basic crimes that we have, a lot of times there'll be phones involved. Right. And so I'll support other investigators you know, by doing search warrants and um, phone dumps or data extractions from cell phones to get the information out of the phone to kind of help with the investigation. So, um, so on, along those lines, um, I know you see all the stuff that's on World Star. Excuse me, with all the kids that they put stuff out there because they, they record fights or or um, some other type of assault. Um, that that type of information that they're putting out there, they, they can be. Um, committing crimes by recording those um, fights or assaults and then putting it out on the internet like, like it's, it's for show to try to get ratings. Is that correct? They have done that, yes. Yeah. Um, now, as far as, let's, let's give an example. Uh, let's say um, we have an adult that's sending sexual messages um, and then we have a, a child let's say the child is in seventh, eighth grade, that's sending sexual messages to a, a young lady, if it's a, a male sending it to a young lady or, or a woman. Do those laws differ any between the, the adults and the juveniles? Um, yes, there, there's the, obviously the child pornography statutes, which mm -hmm. are the, you know, a, anyone over the age of 18 involved with images of a child. Um, <clears throat> with the, actually, I have it right here. The statute mm -hmm. for um, juveniles is actually part of the um, Juvenile Court Act. Okay. And it was in, put in effect uh, July of last year. And it's actually a very good law because in, prior to this law, um, the only real teeth that we had for, in the courts, in the, in the law enforcement for 
kids sexting was the child pornography laws. Right. And which was, you know, clearly not the case when with a boyfriend and girlfriend sending messages back and forth or inappropriate <clears throat> inappropriate in images back and forth. Correct. And so the the, the legislators drafted this um, statute here and it's called Minors Involved in Electronic Dissemination of Indecent Visual Depictions in Need of Supervision. Essentially what it is, it's a minor requiring authoritative intervention. It's the same similar to like a station adjustment for mm -hmm. you know retail theft or basic juvenile crimes and and when a juvenile is involved in sexting for lack of better words for it, they fall under this act here and they can be adjudicated as a minor and then required to either community service or seek counseling uh, counseling to kind of help understand what I did because this statute is more about educating the juvenile versus right. making them a sex offender and putting them on a sex offender register. So it's a really good statute and probably half of the states or something in, in the United States now actually have a drafted laws pertaining to sexting. So I mean, everybody's catching up to that, which is a good thing. Absolutely. But that doesn't preclude from, you know, just because a boyfriend and girlfriend, you know, sends an inappropriate message back and forth, you know, and it falls under this statute, it, it, it's, it's clear in here that says that, you know, if it becomes something else, we can still pursue other charges. You know, say if they break up and then the boyfriend wants to post on Facebook right, and send right. it all over, you know, then we're getting more into a, you know, bigger criminal matter. I mean, because um, this is more for, you know, the sending um, messages between boyfriend and girlfriend and, um, but it's, they can still be, you know, prosecuted as, you know, driven child porn if they decide to do something more, yeah, they, more to, to send more it grievous. to all their friends or, or something like that because they're angry with yeah. the person. If they do something much more egregious, you know, then we can actually, you know, they fall into the, um, the, the traditional laws, I guess. Okay, okay. So, um, <clears throat> these things like Snapchat, you know, as far as the kids are concerned, they, they uh, um, my kids, I've had conversations with them that they, about Snapchat, don't be sending inappropriate stuff over Snapchat. It's all, oh, Dad, well, it, 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 it's gone. Well, once it's, it's finished, it's gone. For, from my understanding, um, the Snapchat videos, the kick, the, you know, instant message videos um, or, or messages, those can be retrieved. Is that correct? Yes. Um, <clears throat> Snapchat, you know, yeah, the purpose of that app is, you know, you send a quick snap. They call it in a little 10-second video, something goofy, you can send to your mm -hmm. friends, they view it, and, and it goes away. Um, it can be used for other things, and typically, yes, the, the video does go away, but um, the way I, the tools I use for, for forensics, you know, oftentimes we'll get those um, videos and images back, too. Um, and that doesn't stop somebody from screenshotting. I know you're alerted when somebody screenshots it through the app, but still, mm -hmm. if you send something you only want that person to see, they screenshot it, they can still send that send to it everywhere people else, right. as they want. So yeah, that's, uh, you got to be very careful with that app. Absolutely, absolutely. Tim, you've given a, a, a tremendous amount of information that I believe our youth <clears throat> and our adults actually need to know. Um, as our parents, um, we need to know what's going on in our kids' phones, um, on their computers and things like that. Um, what they're doing, in, in their personal life, you know, kids are a lot more mature nowadays than I believe we were when we were younger. They're doing a lot more things that we weren't doing or if we were doing it, it, it was in, in a private setting. Um, now they want everybody to know, you know, like, like it's like the Olympics, you know, they want to, everybody to see their acts, you know, their performance. Um, so is there anything that we didn't cover that you think that uh, our community would need to know? Um. <laughs> There's a lot actually, but as right. a limited time frame, one of the other things I do with being a person who handles these types of crimes mm -hmm. and being connected with the Illinois Attorney General's office, I actually will do internet safety presentations to the schools and different groups and stuff. So, and that's usually about our presentation there. So, there's a lot more we can talk about. But right. um, the bottom line is, um, for especially for kids, you know, is we really want them to understand that. You know, when you put something on the internet, you know, once you send it, you you no longer have control of it. I mean, mm -hmm. it could go. I mean, it can go viral. Mm -hmm. I mean, as we see oftentimes, you know. But somebody can screenshot something. They can save it to the computer. They can. I mean, it, it, once you send it out, I mean, it's forever out there. Right. Um, <clears throat> as a father of three daughters, I mean, it's something we talk about 
quite regularly with, mm. my, with my children. And uh, with a child who's in high school now and wanting to go to college and wanting to play sports, I mean, that's one thing we really have to make sure kids know too. And I, I think the message has gotten out a lot better that, you know, we when we, when we hire a new police officer, mm -hmm. I do checks, I, I, do, I try to dig up as much as I can on the internet, Facebook and whatever, social media apps and see if they've done inappropriate stuff or posted inappropriate stuff and that would, you know, could look bad upon them later on or could uh, you know, really hinder an investigation or if they go to trial and they find out something they did in the past, right. you know, it could be a problem. Same thing with kids, you know, if you're getting ready to try and go to college, you want to be recruited to play sports. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've sat in recruiting meetings and stuff. I mean, they absolutely check your social media. Absolutely, your Twitter, your Facebook, your Kick, and all this other stuff. Um, but it's not just recruiting, <clears throat> um, just directed specifically at the college. Uh, I believe military does the same thing, correct? Jobs, I mean, like I said, we mm -hmm. do it for a band. I mean, and that's, we have a pretty extensive background check. But I mean, most employers, I mean, even if you're being hired to, I don't know, work at Carl Hospital or something, right. I mean, I'm sure they'd want to, I mean, it's, it's, it's out there. I mean, it's public information. You know, if you put it on the internet, you know, it's not like they're, you know, trying to crack into something, you know. I mean, it, right. you, you put it out there, you know. Google so the public. name, there it is, right? You know, so, <laughs> but if you have a lot of stuff that Google connected to your name that doesn't look very good, right. people is not going to want to hire you or have you be associated with their company. So, yes, Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's very important to try and keep your online reputation as clean as possible. Absolutely, absolutely. Just like your image, when, when you're when you're walking into the office, you want your digital image, which would be your your Facebook, your internet activity, to be as clean as you are when you walk into your interview. Yep. All right. So, is, is there anything? I mean, is is how if a district superintendent or um, a, a principal wanted to um, obtain your your services for this class? Uh, how would they get a hold of you to get this done? Uh, just contact our Bannon Police Department, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, my name's Tim McNaught, but obviously if they call her Bannon and ask for the computer guy. <laughs> it's going to be it, Tim it, McNaught, it's absolutely. So, <laughs> so, so we can put your email, you know, this be your email across the bottom, and, and they can contact you if they have additional yeah. questions, correct? And, and, yes, and uh, um, there's a lady from Attorney General's office, I mean, that, her full-time job is to go mm -hmm. throughout the state and do these presentations and all I co-present with her, you know, and okay. we enjoy doing it. I mean, I'd be happy to do it, you know. Uh, again, uh, we've done it for local schools here. I mean, it's, she's in high demand, you know, everybody's schedules, schools, schedules right. and curriculum are busy, but I'd be willing to work with uh, schools and whatever agencies to try and get this information out there, yes. Absolutely. Well, Tim, I want to thank you for coming on the Cops Corner today, giving us all this wonderful information. Um, if you do have any other questions about uh, any of the internet activity, sex crime, computers, cell phones, anything that, that we covered today with Investigator McNaught, uh, you can contact this email at the bottom, which is uh, Investigator McNaught's email, or contact me uh, at the email below, and we can get you the proper information. As always, thank you for watching. Have a blessed day.